All right, Shalom. Want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, and salutations to the Lord's whole four legs scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. And uh, this one, it's going to be a quick one, very quick. It's an article I came across, um, and this is uh, from Zero Hedge, and the title is Watch Flying Robo Harvester Picks Ripe Fruit Set to Displace Humans. All right, and they spoke about this, these robots, which will replace humans in their jobs. You know, they spoke about this months ago, and they're doing it. All right, and uh, also what comes to mind is the fourth industrial revolution. You know, it's a part of that agenda that they're pushing. All right, this is the this is the the uh, this is the dream of Esau. All right, where the world is uh, changed, and every human would be a transhuman. You know, we would live among robots and artificial intelligence. So let me just read the first paragraph here. It says, it's no secret by now that the rise of the automation of robots is projected to displace millions of jobs in the coming years. Many low-skilled jobs will be wiped out because of robots. Sending technological unemployment, the loss of jobs caused by technological change through the roof. It says, the latest installment of the technological change leading to the short-term job loss could soon be seen in the fruit harvesting industry. All right. And um, they show you down here in the video where you see drones basically picking the fruit, you know, taking, basically replacing the people's job. You know, and I, you would say, well, how can a, a robot pick right fruit? How can it determine the fruit that we are determined as good to eat? You know, this is all power from Yahweh Bashim Shai on the left hand side. All right. This is technology. This is ease also uh his weapon. Okay, going according accordingly with his blessing. All right, his blessing was the sword. Scriptures say he shall live by the sword. So uh here in this little paragraph it says the far robot can work twenty four hours a day and pick only right fruit. So <laughs> You know, these robots don't take breaks. They don't need to be paid. They work 24 hours of the day. All right. It says, uh, it says it uses AI perception algorithms to locate the trees and vision algorithms to detect the fruit among the foliage and classify its size and ripeness. After choosing the right fruit, the robot then works out the best way to approach the fruit and remain stable as it's picking on, grabs the fruit. All right. It says, um, there are never enough hands available to pick fruit at the right time and at the right cost. All right. So basically, that's it, man. All right. And um, you see it. I just want to grab a few scriptures that come to mind, which is, uh, let me leave from here. And going to going to uh, the book of Psalms, chapter forty nine, because uh, Esau, his inward thought, man, he think he's gonna rule forever. This is Psalms chapter forty nine and eleven. It says their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. All right, and this is basically talking about you Edomites all right they're in the, they're in power right now they're ruling this world in a great wickedness and this plan that they have of their new world order is for everyone to be a transhuman you know people you know merging themselves with uh microchips inside their body you know to become part machine all right part technology they want a internet highway of things where basically every person would be a walking Wi-Fi. All right. If you could, uh, you know, put image that in your head, every person will become a walking Wi-Fi. You know, every uh, building you walk past, every store you walk in, you know, your, your chip 
your microchip which which will be in the body and just in your body it will register to the uh database that's within the store the bank all right or the building so basically you're plugged up to the internet of things all right your where's about where you're going what you eat all right um you know they have something called uh credit worthiness where social credit score is determined off your value and views um it's determined um off your behavior so basically esau you know he wants that full power and control and convenience you know he wants full power and control and convenience you know just proving the scriptures man that that he wants to sit in the seat of the most high so let me read this one more time this is psalms 49 and 11 their inward thought is all right meaning they're conscious right starting with these um international bankers all right the rothschilds that one percent the one who runs the world call the shots okay their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and this is why they have a breaking down of of this world this current world we we live in and they want to establish a new world which is a new system you know and i just explained that you know you could go and look up that fourth industrial revolution all right, it explains a lot. Um, what was in there? It was uh, uh, gene editing, you know, uh, editing your genes, your DNA. All right, they're gonna have to rearrange your DNA in order for you to uh, be connected to technology. None of this stuff is gonna fully play out, uh, as in, we're gonna happily, you know, live out our lives in this manner. <laughs> All right, because the Lord did say he's going to cut them short. So it says that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. All right, they call their lands after their own names. This is Numbers 35 and uh, verse 33. All right, and this is going to start with Yahweh Shai cracking those clouds okay him returning to recover his remnant the elect and also in the in the sense of destroying uh the, the powers that be all right which is starting with esau so this is numbers 35 33 it says so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood it defileth the land and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein but by the blood of him that shed it all right, so when this world do get its refreshed start, all right, new system, new world, it will be in righteousness, okay? It will be cleansed by the blood of him that had shed the blood. The murder, all right, was not North America uh, stolen, robbed, pillaged uh, from a people, which are the Gadites and Reubenites, which the world called Native American Indians, did not Esau, Edom, take and rob and kill and steal this land from them. This whole land is full of blood. Okay. Um, Real quick and think of another scripture. This is Job chapter 14 and 5. It says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So there's a boundary where Esau can't pass. Matter of fact, Salakia. Let me start at verse 4. It says, uh, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? All right. So you can't, you know, create your own world, you know, when your world's been established. Okay. He wants to clean up and erase the past and start this new world as with, as if we're going to live being transhumans and he as a God, you know, ruling over the people. You know, Esau is not a God. And you will not be a God. Matter of fact, I think it's, uh, what is it, Psalms 82? The scriptures say, ye are gods, which are, what, the Israelites. Meaning we're a, a, a less of power in the earth, you know, than our higher power, which is Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, so that, that promise uh, that we are gods, that blessing is to the Israelites, not to the Edomites. 
All right. So anyway, it says who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So he's not getting past. All right. Uh, this kingdom in which been established. All right. All this shit here. Excuse my French. But all this crap is all temporarily. Okay, it's going to seem as though he's going to win, but he's not. All right. Scriptures say he shall, um, the Lord will, uh, the Lord, uh, matter of fact, let me get it. So I get a butcher and stuff. Um, Malachi 1 and 1, the burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. All right, verse 4, it says, Whereas Edom say we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. All right. So Esau is the border of wickedness. And the Lord said that he shall build, but the Lord will what? Throw down. So all this building upon this, this temporary um, system that's being implemented upon us each and every day. It's all going to go up in smokes, man. All right. Verse 5, and your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, Yahweh will be magnified from the border of Israel. And Israel is a people before a place. All right. Uh, I believe that's about it. Hmm. Matter of fact, let me uh, think in one and another scripture come in mind. And I didn't uh, write no scriptures down. This is just in the spirit. Whatever comes to the mind, I'm going to grab it. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. Okay. This is Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man to... Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Now, this is the mindset of these Edomites. All right. Starting with these elites. It says, for we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we have never been. For the breath of our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air, and our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance, and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun, and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again. All right. And also, too, the Lord did say that he would uh, Esau's rule in a short season. You know, so these elites, they know. All right. That they have but a short time. So verse six, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present and let us speedily use the creatures like in like in like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ornaments and let our flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our presumptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion and our lot is this. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing wroth. All right? And this goes 
according to their unrighteous decrees. Okay, they create laws and they justify themselves by their unrighteous laws, unrighteous decrees, man. So it says, let our strength be the law of justice. Just because it's by law doesn't mean that it's right. Okay, Esau passed right for moles and transformers. So do that make it right? It says, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing wrath. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous. See, because he is not for our turn. He is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraideth us with our offending the law and objective to our infamy, the transgressions of our education. He professes to have the knowledge of Yahweh and he calleth himself the child of the Lord. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold. His for his life is like for his life is not like other men's, his ways are of another fashion. Alright, and that just shows you there in verse 14 when it says he was made to reprove our thoughts. These Edomites know that the elect of Yahweh Bashim was shy, okay, um, are what were made, you know, the prophets was sent to reprove Esau's thoughts, you know, their, their agenda, you know, their new world order, all right? It says, he is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. That reminds me of a preset where scriptures say uh, Jacob's portion is not, is not like them, all right? Because why? The elect is, is, uh, uh, is not like the two-thirds of the Lord's people. Okay, and when you look at the men of the Lord, all right, they're not like other men's, though it seems, you know, we all look the same. We all treated the same in this world. But when you look within with the spirit, you will know that these men who prophesy and teach, they're not like the mother men. All right. It says for we, uh, verse 16, we are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed. He maketh his boast that Yahweh is his father. So, yeah, you know, Esau is a counterfeit. You know, did not he uh, steal uh, our nationality? Does not he call himself, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the tribe of Judah, which he's not? All right. Anyway, because... Uh, yeah, verse 17, let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. So they want to see if our words are true. For if the just man be the son of the most high, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. For by his own sayings, he shall be respected. You know, and what comes to mind that I'm thinking about is, uh, you know, just more reason why Jacob's trouble will come. All right. You know, just to uh, because it's a prophecy of Jacob's trouble. All right. You think Esau, which knows this truth. OK. And knows that Yahweh Shah is going to return. Do you not think that he will bring trouble upon the Lord's people? You know, just more common sense. Just common sense. Right. OK. Verse 21. Such things they did imagine and were deceived for their own wickedness have blinded them. See that wickedness, you know, all that witchcraft and blood sacrifice and sexual rituals to conjure up demons, you know, to cast spells, to keep Jake sleep. It what it deceived them for their own wickedness have blinded them. As for the mysteries of Yahweh, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discern a reward for the blameless souls. For Yahweh created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold on his side shall, uh, and they that do hold on of his side do find it all right so that hater e you know hater e okay um anyone who takes part on for his side all right and join forces with him they shall meet what death all right do yahweh by shim yahweh shai 
So let me read that one more time. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. That's why the scriptures say this, uh, uh, Micah 2 and 10, this land is polluted. It will lead, it will uh, destroy you even with a sore destruction, man. You know, so that's basically it. I didn't mean to make it long. I thought it was going to be short, but uh, scriptures was coming out. I didn't have precepts lined up. I just, just wanted to do a quick lesson and hopefully be edifying to those of the whole four leg. You know, basically the topic of this video, I hope I didn't stray away from it, uh, is that uh, flying robo harvester picks right fruit set to displace humans. So it's happening. It's happening. All right. Farm workers who would pick fruit and have a job. They have lost their jobs because the drones, AI intelligence have taken over. And this is just the start. So I hope this lesson is edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.